Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight, where we look at what's really going on in the world of the Bricks. Now, it's been reported by Bloomberg that China's threatening Japan with economic sanctions in the event that Japan introduces new restrictions on the export of equipment for the production of semiconductors. So what will the potential response be from Beijing? Well, in July of this year, the Japanese government announced plans to tighten controls on the export of semiconductor manufacturing equipment in order to limit the possibility of China purchasing such products. Now, the export control list includes equipment that's used in the formation and testing of microcircuits. In particular, equipment related to EUV lithography, which also allows for the tracking of complex circuits in the most modern chips. Japan, like a good little vassal, is doing exactly what the Americans tell them to do as usual. Now, it's worth noting that the Japanese authorities rarely act independently, but act slavishly to the commands of the United States, even when it's obviously against the country's own interests. But when the US wants to impose restrictions on the sale of sophisticated equipment to microcircuits to Japan, uh, from Japan, for production to China, Japan just goes along with it. I mean, the US is keen to impede the advancement of Chinese companies in the semiconductor se sector, thereby reducing the competitive threat posed by them. Of course, like King Canute and tempted to hold back the tide back in history, they consistently discover that these efforts are doomed to failure. In fact, they're just like the sanctions they've been uh, on Russia, they've been a complete failure and so will these attempts to uh, stop uh, China getting the technology. I mean, they may slow down China's progress, but they'll not stop making breakthroughs. In October last year, the United States introduced export controls on semiconductors used in some supercomputers and artificial intelligence system, which could have the potential for use in military applications targeting China. Well, pretty much everything's got a military application as far as the US is concerned. A few days ago, the US government announced new controls on advanced technology, now including quantum computers. Now, the US and China are currently at the forefront of efforts to explore the potential of quantum computing, which some commentators believe could transform the world as we know it. Now, the initial trigger for the trade dispute between the US and China was allegations that Chinese IT companies whose competitors in the global market has increased significantly were spying and stealing the technology. Now, this has given rise to significant concern amongst developed countries. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund my channel and the website seobricksinsight.com to further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation, which is done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Now, everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me, and I'm thanking you all now. Now, Oleg Remga, who's the head of the China Center, the Synergy Corporation, states that the US is encouraging its allies to participate in the trade conflict that started by Donald Trump back in 2018. Now, they're trying to pull in other countries, including the Netherlands and Japan in this dispute, and they're exerting additional pressure on them. Obviously, the US is using its normal taxes of bullying countries that it feels that if they ban them from using the dollar, they're going to fall in line. Consequently, Japanese companies are now facing strong competition from Chinese rivals. I mean, According to Evgeny Smirnov, uh, the new digital technologies advance, the US is implementing increasingly stringent re restrictions on China, trying to stop them catching up. I mean, they're creating new export licensing requirements for US companies doing business with Chinese customers. And this has prompted Chinese companies to develop their own production capabilities and they now actually export microchips rather than just importing them. I mean, the, by the end of this year, China's on target to reach revenues of 40 billion with the gap in, with world leaders narrowing to a low level. I mean, China's the op option of responding to the restrictions in a way that is beneficial to its own interests and will certainly damage uh, the US's interest in uh, microchips and uh, semiconductors. 
I mean, everybody knows that China is the world's largest exporter of rare earth metals, and in 2023 it accounted for 70% of global exports of those, which are used in the production of chips and complex electronics, and even things like gallium, it controls 94% of the exports. As Smirnov says, China is basically able to limit the supply of rare earth metals to Japan since 2010. So they basically, since then, the Japanese have tried to reduce their reliance on China, but that isn't worked, and there's no particular success. So all China needs to do, if uh, Japan decides to take these retaliatory measures, is just do the in kind. I mean, in particular, companies like Toyota will be affected, and particularly if it loses uh, access to essential minerals, and that provides a significant challenge to all the Japanese automotive and electronics industry manufacturers. I mean, these industries are a vital part of the Japanese economy, so that obviously the Japanese government's going to try and avoid retaliatory sanctions. I mean, you've got to understand that Jap Japan's reliance on China is considerably greater than that of the United States. I mean, the figure has grown from 10% in the early 2000s to 24% of the total turnover. For example, the United States accounts for just over 18% of Japan's trade. Japan's automakers make up 19% of the Chinese market and are the largest foreign player after Chinese brands and well ahead of uh, the European brands like the Germans. Now, Romenga has stated that Chinese retaliatory restrictions will have an immediate impact on Japan's trade turnover and its electronics industry. However, the example of Russia demonstrates that sanctions and restrictions result in a significant economic losses and challenges for the countries that implement them. So, given China's, uh, J Japan's increasing reliance on China, Ch Tokyo is going to have to exercise caution and consideration when it decides on which restrictions on chip imports to China, because it's, if it doesn't, it's going to have a serious adverse impact on its economy. It's unlikely that the list of measures will be as severe as those taken by the United States, which has been attempted for several years to stop China's uh, growing technological expansion. So it's probable what the Chinese uh, 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 Japanese authorities will do is attempt to make a statement and say that they're going to be uh, putting measures in, but they're not really going to be uh, that effective. I mean, Japan just is not ready for a fight, uh, as it wasn't with Russia over oil and LNG and coal. It's certainly not going to uh, get into a fight with China where it's not going to succeed. I mean, whatever they do, the export from uh, microchips to China will continue. Japanese manufacturers of, of microchips and related uh, are going to have to diversify their sales channels. They'll probably start selling to India, Vietnam and Malaysia, boost their sales and of course they'll then put, sell them on as third parties through to, uh, to China. So just establishing new trade relations and projects and takes time and really new resources. But given the current economic challenges facing Japan and the, the recession that is currently going through, plus the other numerous issues that dogs their Japanese economy is not in a strong position. And a trade war uh, with its largest uh, trading partner is going to really seriously damage their economy. Anyway, we'll see if the Japanese authorities are prepared for such a scenario. We'll see if the Japanese government has the stomach to inflict more pain on its leading exporters and do further damage to its economy just to benefit its imperial masters in Washington. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, you can help me fund the channel and the website seobricksinsight.com by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the screen. Don't forget the comment section and I'll look forward to answering your comments.